Good evening. Residents across the suburbs and Adelaide Hills have begun a massive clean-up operation in the wake of the torrential rainstorm that swamped at least 80 homes. Nine news crews are on the scene tonight with devastated locals in the worst affected areas. Kim Robinson begins our coverage. The inside of their homes turned into a muddy mess. This is the reality for dozens of residents after yesterday's storm emergency. The whole street, this end of the street, was completely just a, a river. Waiting for an insurance assessor to turn up and, and uh, but it's a fair clean up ahead of us. These three young friends had just moved into this house at Hawthorne. They're now faced with the prospect of starting again. We've lost everything except clothes really. Very upset. It was very distressing the whole situation. As the banks of Brown Hill Creek gave way, the Mitcham Council area was one of the hardest hit. One family was lucky to escape this brick wall landslide got out of the room pretty quickly and got the kids downstairs and we basically went into the garage and phoned the emergency services. Last night, four people in this Torrance Park home were trapped, but the residents chose to stay inside. We have several options of being able to get them out. We have a small boat that we can utilise to ferry them out with. Roads today resembled rock pools at Waterfall Gully. The area is also prone to flash flooding and that's exactly what happened yesterday. I've been here seven years. I haven't seen the waterfall like that before, ever. No, it, was, it was deafening. It was very scary, that's for sure. And while some didn't let the spring storm interrupt their morning routine, others were left to assess the damage. The force of the water so strong, bricks were picked up and tossed about, slamming into this home. Residents left with no option but to leave. He said that um, he was in deep trouble and he wanted a, a bed for the night. Today, backyards were still wetlands as parents tried to keep their children dry and safe inside. Some residents furious, believing the damage could have been avoided had flood strategies been put in place. We've had floods which I believe could have been prevented. It's been a long time coming, there's no doubt about that, but largely it's because councils couldn't agree amongst themselves about what the projects should be. But for this couple, it was a case of all's well that ends well, reunited with their two puppies after the SES smashed glass to rescue them from the rising waters. All we were thinking when, you know, we knew they were in there was, oh my gosh, are they going to be okay? Like, what's going on? You know, picturing them being stuck in the kitchen. Kim Robertson joins us now from Waterfall Gully and Kim, it's going to be an arduous clean up there. It is Brenton. Waterfall Gully Road here behind me has now been open to some residents, but it will remain closed to members of the public for some days, if not weeks. Now, that also includes the popular walking trail up to Mount Lofty, which has also been badly damaged by these floods. Now, the state government today also announced emergency relief money for those affected across the state. It's offering up to $1,400 for households for emergency supplies and to help with the cleanup as the damage built from these these floods is estimated to run into the millions of dollars. Thank you, Kim. Residents in parts of Adelaide South have also been swamped despite frantic efforts to keep the water out. A quaint southern suburbs community awakens underwater. Entire streets, yards and homes at Old Norlunga submerged. Pretty much destroyed everything. Probably got some blankets left maybe. At its worst Danny Dench's home in Loud Street was under a foot of water. His family had to use a canoe to save their pet dogs. Once it started coming up it just kept coming up. Danny's is just one of many homes swamped by the flooding emergency which began last night. This man forced to abandon his SUV and climb onto the roof. Rescue crews saving him with an inflatable raft. By midnight, residents knew they were dealing with a catastrophe. Exhausted, exhausted, been up all night um, trying to prevent it. This morning, Daniel Tyndall saw the true extent of the damage to his home. Some residents saying despite the warnings, emergency crews were underprepared. It was really average. They sort of, uh, they rocked up with uh, empty sandbags and started yeah, digging... Um, filling the sandbags out of our lawn. I couldn't get any sandbags. 
They said there was no sandbag. In the uh, lower Onkapringa area, there were uh, sufficient sandbags that were provided by the no longer uh, SES and through state stocks. This resident didn't need any. Never, ever seen anything like this in my life. It looks like we've got a swimming pool in the front yard. Others weren't as lucky, including the local primary school, which was closed for the day. Long-time residents say these streets are prone to flooding, but this is by far the worst they've seen in more than three decades. Staggering, considering the area only received about five mils of rain. There might have been a problem with the valve that's supposed to let the stormwater out. Might have got jammed open or something like that. That's happened before. I'm a bit numb, to be honest. Eddie got... And Eddie joins us now from Old Norlunga. And Eddie, quite amazing. Many of those homes there were inundated despite the area hardly getting any rainfall at all. Yeah, that's right, Kate. The residents here say that it's the rainfall from elsewhere that the storm water system simply couldn't cope with causing these streets to flood. Now, it's impacted on about a dozen homes. As you can see from this property here, it's still dealing with a lot of water. The front yard is almost completely submerged, and that was much higher earlier. It's uh, badly impacted on the house itself. Now, as you saw from that story, where we're standing at the moment just this afternoon was under several feet of water. Obviously, they've done a great job pumping most of that water out, but the residents here say that the cleanup and the repairs that will need to be done are going to take weeks. Yeah, they will. Eddie, thank you. And as that cleanup continues, torrents are still raging across a massive flood zone causing widespread problems. Jessica Braithwaite is beside the River Torrens. And Jessica, what's the situation right now? Yeah, well you can see behind me, Brent, and the torrents here at Clemsig is still gushing at a dangerously high level. And just to give you an idea, it's flowing at a rate of 85,000 litres per second. Now, that's compared to this time last week when it was flowing at 1,000 litres per second. So a huge scale there. And all of the water that's poured down this waterway alone has created an enormous polluted mess on the Torrens Lake in the city downstream from here. The weir has caught most of the debris before the filthy water travels west and spills into the gulf at Henley Beach South where our normally blue waters are now an unhealthy looking sea of brown. It's the same at Glenelg where the Padawalunga is the outlet for much of our urban stormwater system including Brown Hill Creek which flooded yesterday and overnight with such devastation in our eastern suburbs. And a filthy plume of water is also evident down at Port Norlunga where the Onkaparinga River empties out after making its way through the Adelaide Hills. There is more widespread Spread flooding even further south with the Bremer River bursting its banks around Langhorn Creek, flooding roads, the town oval and vineyards. And our reservoirs make a spectacular sight tonight with Mount Bold, Kangaroo Creek and Millbrook in the Adelaide Hills all overflowing. In fact, our entire reservoir net network is holding 93% of its maximum compared with just 56% at this time last year. Now, the good news for now is that the rain has stopped, but there could be a another rain event on the way. I've got the full forecast coming up later. Thank you, Jessica. And towns in the Adelaide Hills are also counting the cost of the storm, which caused major creeks and res reservoirs to burst their banks too. Dozens of roads have been closed, with some residents still unable to reach their homes. A single car abandoned on the edge where the middle of Montacute Road has become a cliff face. The earth and bitumen washed away, a lane transformed into a river. We advised the council ages ago, you see there's a culvert going through there and that was blocked. Some locals still haven't been able to access their homes further up. They don't yet know the full extent of the damage. I'll find out as soon as I can get up there, so uh, I'm hoping it is. But yeah, it's been there 130 years. Few roads were spared through the hills. 39 have been closed throughout the state due to damage and fallen trees. Hang on, just stop for a sec. At Allgate's main street, floodwaters ripped up bitumen. <laughs> Properties including the Allgate RSL also flooded. It looked like it was under siege. Uh, when I arrived, water was uh, gushing out underneath the front door. Creating a big clean-up job for veterans. We worked uh, fairly late last night. Uh, we had to pull all the carpet up. That was completely ruined by, by the floods. Businesses hit hard too. The basement of a hair salon had almost two metres of water pour in. Just trying to control the water and something that was uncontrollable actually, so we just had to let nature take its course and then have the big clean up afterwards. 
The clean-up in Adelaide Hills towns will take weeks. The scale of damage is immense and authorities are warning residents to be patient. Wildlife was caught up in the deluge too. Russell later helped this koala escape floodwater. It took refuge on a fence post. Water was right up to the, to the bridge, so uh, yeah, anything trying to move around would have had all sorts of trouble. Yeah. But we know where he is now. High and dry, taking a nap after a big day in the hills. Jared Brevy, Nine News. And a tricky operation to rescue more than 30 primary school students and teachers after they were trapped by floodwaters at Rapid Bay. Earth-moving machinery had to be called in to get the children to safety when the only road to the local school was cut off last night. Very worried today. Um, I know that you know you can have a really bad accident and hardly it can be only be 30 centimetres of water, but if it's you know flowing fast like it is, anything can happen. Thankfully, it all went to plan and the youngsters were reunited with their anxious parents.